Remove the old valve stem if it is being replaced. Warning: Check tire and wheel carefully before mounting. Make sure the tire bead diameter and wheel diameter match exactly. Consult the Rubber Manufacturers Association, 1400 K Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20005. Telephone 202-682-4800 or fax 202-682-4854 for approved rim widths for tire sizes. Danger. Attempts to force a bead to seat on mismatched tires and wheels can cause the tire to violently explode, causing serious personal injury or death to operator and or bystanders. Warning. Never mount a tire and wheel handed to you by anyone without checking both tire and wheel for damage and compatibility. Be extra cautious of persons without knowledge of tire service. Keep bystanders out of the service area. Warning. Never mount a damaged tire. Never mount a tire on a rusty or damaged wheel. Damaged tires and or wheels can explode. Warning. If you damage the tire bead during mounting, stop. Remove the tire and mark it as damaged. Do not mount a damaged tire. Inspect the wheel closely for damage. Clean the wheel and remove any light corrosion or rubber residue. On steel wheels, remove any light rust in the bead seat area and around the circumference of the valve stem hole. Do not attempt to service heavily corroded wheels. Install a new valve stem if it is being replaced. Inspect tire for damage paying close attention to the beads. Always check to see that the tire you are going to install is the correct size for the wheel. The importance of checking every tire and every wheel cannot be overemphasized. Trying to mount and inflate mismatched tires and wheels is a common cause of problems and accidents. It is unsafe. Lubricate tire beads liberally with tire manufacturer approved lubricant. Lubricated beads require much less force to mount and thereby are less likely to be damaged during the mounting operation. Place tire over wheel and move tower into position. Position tire so that the lower bead is above left rear extension of the mount demount head and below the right front knob. Press the tabletop pedal for clockwise rotation and lower bead mounting. Utilize the wheel's drop center by pushing down on the tire sidewall opposite the mount demount head to reduce tensional force on the bead as it is mounted. Remember to take your time and jog the tabletop rotation on difficult tires. You can stop and or reverse tabletop rotation if necessary. For top bead, rotate the tabletop until the valve stem is 90 degrees from the mount head, right side. Lift the upper bead up and over the left knob of the mount demount head. Mount the upper bead using the same procedures as on the lower bead. This requires more effort. You must always keep the bead in the drop center of the wheel opposite the mount demount head. On stiff sidewall tires, utilize the right-hand helper roller to press down on the tire near the mount demount head and the left-hand helper to press down on the tire immediately next to, clockwise of, the right-hand helper roller and hold the bead in the drop center and prevent slippage between tire and rim during rotation. The left-hand helper shoe will follow the tire during rotation. Warning, do not force the tire onto the rim. Bead damage could result in making the tire unsafe and or creating the risk of injury. After the tire is mounted on the rim, move the tilt tower out of the way in preparation for tire inflation. Tire inflation is performed in three steps, bead seal, bead seat, and inflation. These steps are explained in detail in the operator's manual. Read the explanation of each step and understand them thoroughly before proceeding. Before attempting bead sealing, bead seating, and inflation, be sure you thoroughly understand all of the warnings in the tire changer and in the operator's manual. Danger. Tire failure under pressure is hazardous. This tire changer is not intended to be a safety device for restraining exploding tires, tubes, rims, or bead sealing equipment. So be very careful and follow instructions. Check again to be certain the tire and rim size are correctly matched. Always use approved tire bead lubricant during mounting and inflation. The inflation pedal located on the left side of the machine controls the flow of air through the inflation hose. Before connecting the clip of the inflation hose air chuck to the valve stem, make sure the core is removed and that the stem is close to the hose. 
Rotate the tabletop to position the stem properly as needed. The inflation pedal has three positions. Position 1, at rest, registers the air pressure in the tire on the gauge when the hose is connected to the tire valve. Always use an open style clip-on chuck. Position 2, first activated position, allows line pressure to flow through the hose to the tire valve. Position 3, second activated position, allows line pressure to flow to the tire valve and the airflate bead seal jets to help seal the beads. Caution. Use position 3 for bead sealing only. Do not use this position without a tire and wheel positioned on the tabletop. Dirt and debris could be blown into the air with enough force to injure the operator or bystanders. Do not use this position to inflate a tire. Note that this unit is equipped with a pressure limiter to assist the operator with tire inflation. The pressure limiter cycles between tire inflate and checks pressure during inflation of the tire. Remember, tires can be overinflated and explode even with the use of this pressure limiter if other instructions on the machine and in the operator's manual are not followed. It is the operator's responsibility to follow all instructions and to control inflation pressure as specified in these instructions. If these instructions are followed completely, the pressure limiter will keep most car and light truck tires from inflation beyond 60 psi. Smaller tires may reach higher pressures. Check the function of the pressure limiter regularly and maintain it according to the instructions provided in this manual for safe and proper operation. Do not tamper with or attempt to adjust the pressure limiter. Tires requiring inflation beyond 60 psi should be inflated in a safety cage. Lift the tire against the upper edge of the rim with the top bead over the bottom of the valve stem. Briefly depress the inflation pedal to position 2 to start airflow to the air chuck. After a slight pause at position 2, further depress the pedal to position 3 and hold it less than one second before fully releasing. The blast of air will expand the tire and help seal the beads. Check to make sure the beads are sealed to the rim. Repeat the procedure if the beads are not sealed. Once the beads are sealed, remove the clip-on air chuck and reinstall the valve core and then release the clamps. Warning! Operators should keep hands, arms, and entire body away from the tire during the remaining bead seat and inflation procedures. Do not stand over tire, as personal injury could result. Warning! Never increase air pressure to exceed 40 psi when attempting bead seat. If operator is unable to obtain bead seat, something is wrong. Deflate tire completely. Inspect tire and wheel, correct any problems found, relubricate both tire beads, and reattempt bead seal and seat procedures. Follow all safety instructions in manual and on machine. Depress the inflation pedal to position 2 to inject air into the tire in short intervals. The tire beads should move outward to their bead seat position as pressure within the tire increases. Always check the inflation gauge in between each air injection intervals to be sure you never exceed 40 psi while seating the beads. If the bead will not seat with 40 psi or less, stop. Something is wrong. Completely deflate the tire and inspect the entire tire and wheel. Check the operator's manual for further assistance. Relubricate both beads before you try again. Never try to force a bead to seat with high air pressure. An explosion could result causing personal injury or death. Danger. Check tire pressure frequently. Never exceed 40 psi while seating beads. Once seated, never exceed tire manufacturer's recommended air pressure. Tires can explode, especially if they are inflated beyond their limits. At all pressure levels when inflating through the valve stem, keep hands, arms, and entire body away from inflating tire. An exploding tire, wheel, or bead sealing equipment may propel upward and outward with sufficient force to cause serious injury or death to operator or bystander. Make sure both beads are seated. When both beads are seated, the tire is ready for inflation. Danger. Never exceed tire manufacturer's recommended air pressure. 
Tires can explode, especially if inflated beyond their limits. Keep hands, arms, and entire body back from inflating tire. Avoid distraction during inflation. Check tire pressure frequently to avoid overinflation. Excessive pressure can cause tires to explode. An exploding tire, wheel, or bead seating equipment may propel upward and outward with sufficient force to cause serious injury or death to operator or bystander. Continue to stand back from the tire and depress the inflation pedal to position 2 to inflate the tire to the vehicle manufacturer's recommended pressure using short intervals of air injection while monitoring the inflation gauge. For safety, never exceed the tire's rated pressure specified on its sidewall. The pressure limiter will cycle the airflow as described earlier. On most passenger car tires, the pressure limiter will cease airflow at approximately 60 psi. On smaller volume tires, the pressure may be higher. Excess pressure may be released without removing the air chuck. Press the air release valve button located near the pressure gauge. Provided the next wheel and tire are identical and are clamped the same way, the mount-demount head need not be repositioned each time the tower is moved forward. After finishing the last tire in a set, it is a good practice to unlock and push back the mount-demount head and relock before tilting the tower to its back position so there is no damage to the next tire and rim of a different size when the tower tilts forward. Caution. Only tire technicians with experience and training in custom wheels should attempt to service expensive custom alloy or aluminum wheels and high-performance, low-profile tires. Ensure all weights have been removed. Clamp wheel from the outside to prevent inner rim damage. Use ample lubricant for mounting and demounting. Always review wheel nicks and or scratches with the owner before servicing. For aluminum and custom wheels, follow the instructions provided for standard steel wheels, except after loosening and lubricating both beads, rotate the tabletop until the clamps are in the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position. The tabletop clamps provide outside clamping of wheels 12 to 24 inches in diameter and inside clamping of wheels from 14 to 26 inches. Clamp wheel from the outside. Position rim edge into clamp at 12 o'clock position. Lower the wheel and depress the clamp control pedal. Slowly move the clamps inward until they securely contact the outside edge of the rim. Tip. This is usually accomplished by crouching down in front of the tire changer, holding the wheel with the right hand and operating the clamp control pedal with the left hand. This allows the operator to watch the clamps as they move to ensure proper damage-free clamping. Follow these instructions for performance type tires and wheels, including run flat tires and their associated wheels and asymmetrical hump wheels. Remove valve core and completely deflate tire. Pull the bead loosener shoe away from the machine and roll the tire into position against the bumper pad. Position the tire with the valve stem in the 2 o'clock position, above the bead loosener shoe. Always loosen the bead on the narrow mounting side of the wheel first. Wheels with an asymmetrical hump have a larger ledge-type hump around the wheel, except at the valve hole, making them more difficult to mount and demount. Some wheels have a low-pressure sensor transmitter strapped to the wheel. Others have a sensor mounted directly to the valve stem. This is especially true on run-flat tire wheel systems. The strap sensor is positioned directly opposite from the valve stem. To avoid damaging the sensor, always loosen the top bead with the valve stem at the 2 o'clock position first, and then continue to loosen the remaining circumference of the beads as necessary. <laughs>